I think this experience is amazing. We have lots of cool championships, but I think playing in Doha obviously is the best one of the year. I'm impressed, honestly, here in, in Qatar, how serious the people, you know, take paddle. Everyone is supporting the sport here in order to grow in a, in a very good way. It's an honor for me to be part of the history, you know. Um, I try to always send that message that nothing is, is impossible. Hello, welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Abdul Halim. On this episode, we take a swing at some racket sports. From tennis to paddle, we've got you covered. Top tier tennis was in full swing again at the Qatar Open. And that's where I got a chance to sit down with Tunisian star, Anz Jabour. But first, paddle is all anyone is talking about nowadays, which makes it unsurprisingly one of the world's fastest growing sports. Here in Qatar, paddle's popularity is showing no signs of slowing down. And as Laila Humaira found out, the country is scoring major deals to host international tournaments. Mohamed Al Hanji is one of Qatar's top paddle athletes. While tennis was his first love, he made the switch to paddle five years ago and hasn't looked back since. I've played tennis uh, for 20 years and um, uh, paddle. Um, Paddle came, uh, came up recently and uh, I started playing it. I'm practicing uh, morning and afternoon, uh, doing uh, physicals practice as well. Taking this very serious, my ambition is high. Of course, I want to represent my country in the best way that I can. And where better for Mohammed to fly Qatar's flag than by competing at the Uridu Qatar Major for the third consecutive time, facing the best paddle athletes in the world. These players that we are competing with, they are playing paddle for all their life. We are like compared to them, new to the sport. So we are learning a lot, having a great experience. So I'm very happy that I can see my improvement and the performance each year better and better. In the women's draw, the competition pool is also improving every year. As seen through the eyes of the world number six, Spain's Marta Ortega, who started playing paddle at six years old. This is a very important tournament for the year. You know, and at the beginning of the season, maybe you are like more fresh. So um, I think we have like a pressure uh, to do it right. So it's really important for us to do a nice result here. Uh, it gives you lots of points and obviously lots of confidence uh, for the rest of the year. The Uridu Kata tournament is the first major stop in Premier Paddle's 2024 season under a new unified global professional ecosystem. 25 tournaments spanning 18 countries and five continents will culminate with the finals in Barcelona. It's a big year for paddle in Qatar as the country is also set to host the World Championships come November, much to the delight of the sport's growing fan base. Paddle now it's uh, one of the important sports uh, and uh, everyone here in Doha, they love to play uh, paddle uh, in different categories, kids, uh, women, uh, all uh, of community here in Qatar, they love paddle. And, uh, we're trying, you know, to, to do our best, you know, to promote this uh, game. That's also what Premier Paddle hopes this fresh competition format will do. Get the sport exposed to a bigger audience and score more deals to take Paddle to greater heights. I think the most important today is uh, creating uh, this big structure around the players and uh, go slowly but surely and expand to more markets like uh, in Asia, the USA and um, in Africa, then we should be having more tournaments coming. And we look forward to continuing doing this job and uh, make it better and better. Here in Qatar, the craze over paddle is being fueled by more new facilities to cater to the growing demand. Whether it's for competitive play or for fun, Qatar Foundation recently opened two new paddle courts in Education City. You can choose to play outdoors within the grounds of Education City Golf Club or indoors at the Dome, both of which have been decked out by Adidas. The Dome is very dear to me and it's because it has a great uh, five paddle court and it's an indoor venue. Uh, not only that, but because it dedicates a few hours for ladies only. This place is uh, fully accessible by everyone. 
These new facilities not only provide the public with high-quality courts, world-class coaching is also available for those who want professional guidance. It's so important to give good quality, to make the people feel at home, to make the people feel comfortable when they come and play. And this is what we are trying to do. People are really enjoying the, the process sport. They are pushing themselves a lot when it comes to competition. They really want to improve it and they are taking it very, very seriously. And while pedal is already giving legacy record sports like tennis a run for its money, there's still a bit more of catching up to do. Of course, Padel still has a long road ahead, you know, to be compared to, to the industry of tennis. But I think, you know, the, the industry of Padel is taking the right decision. Premier Padel is one of the examples. And I think with time we will see that uh, tennis and Padel, you know, start to get uh, closer to each other. But if Padel's meteoric rise in Qatar is any indication for the growth the sport is expected to see, the industry is headed for an all-round smashing good time. I'm impressed, honestly, here in, in Qatar, how serious the people, you know, take paddle. Everyone is supporting the sport here in order to grow in a, in a very good way. Anja Bohr is hoping to continue to play her way into the record books in 2024. The 29-year-old Tunisian already made history as the first Arab and African woman to reach a Grand Slam final. Now she's hoping to win one. I recently caught up with the sixth-ranked woman in the world ahead of this year's Qatar Total Energy Open. You're an inspiration to women and men in this region. What does it mean to be the first Arab to make a Grand Slam final? It's an honor for me to be part of the history, you know. Um, um, I try to always send that message that nothing is, is impossible. So for me, um, I really uh, try to act very well on and off the court and, uh, you know, just trying to open more doors for, uh, for different people. You've been on the court for a while, I think starting from the age of three, your mom took you to the tennis clubs. What made you fall in love with tennis? Just like, uh, I, I'm always a very active kid, you know, so the, the fact that I was running <laughs> behind the ball and just uh, chasing it was, was very, very nice. Uh, my mom was very supportive, so I think the connection of a uh, mother-daughter really helped me. And uh, for me, uh, I just fell completely in love with the sport. And you're not done dreaming yet. What would it mean to win your first ever Grand Slam title? Uh, it do mean a lot to me. Uh, it's it's a childhood dream uh, for me, for, for my family, and, and I feel now it's for a whole continent, you know. So uh, definitely it would mean a lot and definitely will, uh, will help me a lot. That's a lot of pressure. This is a competitive sport, but you're known as the Minister of Happiness. How do you keep uh, that smile? Um, I feel like uh, smiling always g could give uh, great energy and I'm always looking for a positive energy. So uh, for me, if I, uh, I can change somebody's day, that, uh, that, that, that's amazing. So uh, I'll always keep smiling and um, hopefully good things will come my way. Now you're one of the most outspoken uh, players on the tour. You've obviously been affected by what happened in Gaza. How do you compartmentalize something like that when you're playing, but then it's still obviously, I'm sure, in the back of your mind? You know, it's, it's very tough to, um, to kind of live in, in this situation, and uh, it breaks my heart. This, uh, I've been living with, um, uh, with this war for, uh, since I was a kid, you know. And now, since um, you know, I can use my platform to, to speak out about this, I, I try to do my best, and uh, um, of course, try to do my best on a tennis court. Maybe I can. Uh, a change a little bit, I can help a little bit if I can. I'm On Jabber and I'm proud to be part of the World Food Program family. You were recently named the World Food Program's Global Goodwill Ambassador, and as an athlete, you know a lot about nutrition. How will you use your voice to end world hunger? I think the, the least thing we can do for, uh, for people around the world just to give them a decent meal, you know, and I think it's, it is very important to have uh, a good nutrition um, for, for um, um, young kids to, to focus on in schools and everything, they, if they're on empty stomach, it's, it's very, very difficult. So I think the least thing we could try to do is improve that and, uh, of course, um, 
I was very happy uh, uh, with the, the World Food Program nominated me as the, the global ambassador and I'm looking forward to do much more things with them. Now you're not only a fan favorite but the players obviously respect you. Serena chose you as one of her last doubles partners. What does that mean when you know you get the recognition of your peers as well? It's it's very important. I think like I um, I, I give them respect. They give me respect back. And uh, uh, to play with such a legend like Serena is really unbelievable. And uh, definitely, I will never forget about that doubles. Um, hopefully, um, um, you know, I can maybe <laughs> one day play with with the uh, with the younger people with me to to to, to show them also the way. Um, it's it's um, it's nice to have that respect between between you know different players. Now we were hoping to see you last year at the Qatar Open, but your, your the knee injury. What does this tournament mean for you? It means a lot. I mean, I was very sad to miss it last uh, last year, but uh, uh, I'm back and uh, I'm very happy to be back. I, it was the most difficult, you know, uh, um, kind of a swing to miss, but uh, I'm glad to be back now. And what's your thoughts on how this year is going to play out for Al Jabbar? Uh, I'll try my best, you know, just one match at a time. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be ready to. Uh, to win some matches and definitely waiting for the crowd to help me. Last question, what would be your message to young women and girls about um, you know, the possibilities for them? The first thing I want to do is, is hear them out and hear the, the young girls, uh, young boys to, to talk about whatever their dreams and definitely uh, hear their questions and I'll definitely encourage them to always believe in their dreams, uh, to uh, be disciplined, to work hard, but work smart, you know, to achieve their dreams. But I'm, I'm very curious to know how they are thinking and uh, from there I think it's, it's easier to guide them. Talk about an action-packed episode. From Paddle's rising popularity in this country to meeting a tennis superstar inspiring young people across this region, we hope you enjoyed this episode. But that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cutter 365.